Today on the Skid Factory, we've been collecting parts to do this exhausting job. Welcome back to the skid factory. Before we start on the exhaust, we're actually going to get stuck into some fuel system stuff. We pulled the tank out last week and give it a clean out, get all the fuel and slime and rust out of the bottom of it. It's in pretty good nick. It looks like it should be bolted on the side of a World War II Jeep, but that's just how they made things back in the 70s. Uh, so obviously carbureted car has no provision for fuel pumps or anything like that. Basically just got a float inside there for fuel level and a six mil and four mil fuel line for feed and return. They get, um, they just suction pipes that go to the front. There was an old little old electric fuel pump in the front there that was servicing the engine. None of that's any good to us. Um, the lines aren't big enough for a start, but also obviously we need high pressure stuff. So we're going to fit a fuel pump assembly inside the tank. Uh, so there's a few ways you can go about fuel injecting your car. Uh, you can just use a pump, low pressure pump that fills a surge tank externally. We've done that before as well. It all works. The problem with that is it is very complicated and there's a lot of lines and you can get fuel smell and that sort of thing. So recently this sort of stuff's become available. That's, this is basically a Commodore fuel pump assembly. They call it an MRA. I don't know what those acronyms mean. I'm, I'm thinking it's modular something assembly, modular racing assembly, something like that. Let us know in the comments if you think you know what it is. We'll pin, we'll the, pin the most popular the best, one. The best one gets pinned and it doesn't have to be correct. <laughs> so this is out of a VX Commodore. Um, there's actually a few different types you can get. These come from Raceworks. This is a genuine Delphi assembly, so the, what the original manufacturer used in the Commodores. Um, it's got a pump and everything in it. This particular one has an internal regulator, but there are there is a VT version, which is the earlier model, that doesn't have an internal reg if you want to run a return system. We don't need to run a return system with this engine. It's only, it's, it's an NA engine. Um, it's running on 98, so it doesn't need a lot of fuel flow. Um, so we've got a four bar regulator in tank, same as what an LS1 would have had. Um, that this would have been used for. So we are going to change the pump though because I don't know how big these pumps are and we just um, got a, a high flow version pump from Raceworks that will fit in the same spot. There's four different types of these. There's two that are this size, one with re internal reg and one without. And there's the VE version which is really short and also the BA Falcon version which is really short but has a return system availability. So they're kind of giving you a a few different options as far as tank heights and how you want to set up your fuel system. This stuff's really good for anything up to about 600 horsepower. You're probably going to be able to use this setup. Um, so tank measurements are important. I measured this prior. As usual, nothing's sort of perfect, but we've, you've got this sort of height that you can play around with. Um, it is actually still too high. You were just covering your ass because you got the measurements wrong. <laughs> I got the measurements wrong on this and the exhaust system, but you get that. Um, <laughs> damn humans. Uh, the beauty of these is even though it's supposed to work between that and that, you can actually just pull this apart and change the length of these rods and it will move further in. So there's no drama there. Maybe you can show us how to do that, Alan. I will because it has to be done. Uh, these come with a or you can select which one you want, either aluminium or steel. Obviously, we're using steel. This is the ring that has to be welded on. So you've got to plunge a hole in the tank, weld this on. Then that goes in, and then this is your retainer with the O-ring, etc. So a little bit more difficult than some of the ones that have a, a non-welding setup, but they are, they are a pain in the ass in their own way. So, And this is also heaps cheaper. So, And this is you could buy this in any... any super cheap auto store in Australia if it had a failure as well because it's just a common part. So let's start chopping stuff up. Everyone loves chopping holes in fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's going to explode. Back the 
quickly. Yeah, that's what I do. It's not going to explode if there's no fuel or vapour in it. It's just a tank. It's just metal. But make sure there's no fuel or vapour in it. Or oh, use do the old exhaust trick. Stick it up the exhaust, up the bottom yeah. of an exhaust. We've already done that. Wash it out with truck wash. Dry it out. Put the exhaust up it. Just leave it running for an hour. Done deal. Carbon monoxide. Inert. Obviously, you've got to find a place in the tank where this will fit. Uh, we can't put it in the middle because there's a bunch of breathers and stuff, plus the fuel sender unit, which sweeps up and down here. That side's got a fuel filler coming into it. This side's free, so we're going to put it on over this side. There's baffling all through here. Uh, you do not have to put this in the middle. That's, it, that's why it has this assembly here. It is its own surge tank. Most cars from factory, they aren't in the middle, so it's not a requirement. Shout out to Dave. That was the bit I was looking for, but got some bonuses anyway. We've shortened the assembly so it is appropriate for the height of the tank. You may or may not have to do that. Uh, and this one, it's doable. Other ones may not be as easy. We just pulled it apart and shortened the tubes and put a pop rivet in the end of it so it can't come apart. There's a spring in here, so it's when you push it down into the tank, it pushes it in. Uh, we've put a different pump in it because we just needed one a bit larger than what, what's factory fitted. They normally have this sort of flexible hose and that's because of the proximity of everything it's quite close together that doesn't work with the new pump that we've got so we put, just put some submersible hose in there and just made it to the exact correct length otherwise it'll get kinky make sure you always use submersible hose inside a fuel tank normal stuff will not handle it and you will have problems that's ready to go back in after we've welded this on key point with this make sure you've got this orientated the right way. It can be anywhere, but these holes here have to be in between those three pipes because you can't do the bolts up otherwise. So make sure you mock it up, work out where you want your pipes, and then mark it. We've done that, we're ready to weld it. Let's get stuck in. tank welded up pretty well no dramas there some tanks as I said earlier are tinned so they have this sort of weird smooth sort of coating on them you have to remove that if you want to weld otherwise you can uh, silver solder that onto the tank if it's very difficult to remove that stuff this one didn't have that problem I was just steel so um, it welded up really nice uh, we use a, a tool pro heat gun at 600 degrees to solder these holes shut. That's where the, the uh, in and out used to be. Works sweet. I was just gonna use it to preheat the tank, but it was hot enough that it, we could actually just use it to solder it. So that's all good. We then blocked all the holes off, um, bolted it all in, and then pressure tested it, and it came up sweet. So uh, we're nearly ready to put it back in the car. We've got um, a bit of a T-piece sort of arrangement here. These, these are a bit strange. It's got a regulator in the tank, but then it has an outlet as well. And yeah, you'd think it'd just be T-pieced internally, but it's not. Maybe that's to do with 
uh, V6 and V8 engines. I don't know just how it is. So basically the pressure comes out here and then goes back in and then it's regulated internally. But we're just running one AN6 line up to the front into a T-piece, teed into the, two, the back of the two rails and then just a balance at the front of the two rails. So um, nice and simple, less hoses the better if you can get away with it. Do you want to make up an AN line before you put the tank in for there? Well, actually, we can get it from the inside of the car. The back seat's out. We've made plenty of AN lines over the years. I believe it was the Tirana series, Alan, where we, we went into detail about 100 series, 200 series, 400 series stuff. You can watch that video. Was it the Tirana series? I'm not sure, but let's say that. Let's say that. Click the link up in the corner there to watch that video. But a quick recap is... Make a list, get your notepad out, write down the fittings you're going to need, 90s, straights, 45s, in whatever style hose you're going to use. We are using Teflon hose for this, which is a single dash six line, straight up. You're going to need yourself one of these finger decapitators. Parrot beak cutter. Otherwise, you won't be able to cut the hose. You can use a grinder for 100 series. Get yourself a set of AN spanners. You don't really need to use AN spanners, but it is advised so you don't scratch the fittings. And then your shiny black things end up all dinged and scratched and it looks stupid. And this little tool here, which is from Raceworks, is basically just helps spread the Teflon inside. After you put the nut on, you can put the collet on and spread this around. Really simple, really easy. Making AN lines is super easy. Don't be scared to do it. Write a list, get some fittings yourself and give it a, give it a go. Super easy and you can save yourself lots of money rather than paying someone else to do it. Also, get yourself some of these jaws while you're at it too because they are handy also to hold the fittings. We should give away some jaws and don't, spanners. Don't give away the giveaway that we're going to do Alan. <laughs> and don't forget the nut like when you do brake fittings. Always put the nut on first because you will always miss it and it's a pain. And then you get the braid up your fingernails like I'm about to do. So squeeze the nut on Grab your Raceworks tool, I even, wouldn't even know what you call this, Alan. Give it a little in ream. Ream would be the correct word of the day. Then goes the ferrule. Ferrule. Will ferrule. Give that a little ream. Always use a bit of lube on your fittings. It's always handy, lube always helps. And then, if you can't get it on by hand, Press it up against... You've pretty much done it wrong if you can't get it on by hand. Press it up against something like the hoist or the bench to squeeze it on. Now moving around everywhere. Stop this is where it. your jaws come in handy. Tighten her up. And then your AN spanner so you don't scratch the fitting. And they don't have to be overly tight once you get them down. That'll be about it. Don't have to go reefing on it. So that's our line now that's going to run back to the fuel tank, up to the fuel rails into a T-piece where we split off into two dash sixes. Top job, Roger. You've been on the broom longer than what Alan has, mate. Someone's got to do it, bros. Certainly not you. Certainly is, me. Fuel system's all done. We've got the MRA in the tank with a new Raceworks pump inside it. We've got adapters to go out into dash six uh, AN lines. Then we've got a, a filter under the car, up the front into the engine bay here, into a Y piece. And we've got parallel rails with just a, a bridge across the front. It's a deadhead system, so that will do the job. Now we're gonna move on to making the headers and the exhaust. I've got a big box full of tubes and stuff over there. I'll give you some tips and tricks for making headers. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hi everybody. Christmas is coming and just because you're a grown ass man doesn't mean you don't deserve a big sack full of stuff. Look at it. Calendar. Lemon squash. Mm, that's nice. Stickers, hell yeah. Oh, coffee too, cup. Is it too early? Is it too early? I'm not too sure. You might be able to use it for some lemon squash instead. Key tag? Key tags, look at that. Wow. Treat yourself. Christmas pack. Get on to it. The store. $60. Doesn't include the stocking. Was that all? Is there anything else in no there? No stocking included. I'm using Are you this. Sure? <laughs> Go 
Go on the draw. Go on the draw before the 10th of December to win a Tool Pro X kit. Heaps bigger than that. We've got a couple to give away. Get on it. Is that we done? I wasn't even ready for that. I know. <laughs> Probably the first tip you I would suggest is if you can buy headers for your car, just buy them made because this is an incredibly time consuming job. This will take a couple of days of back and forwards, back and forwards, cut, cut little bits off, times eight and the rest. So if you can buy them, just buy them. Um, the second thing is sizing. Flange, this is one of the other things you'll need, obviously is a set of flanges. These, can't, these are all separate, these flanges on this, which is, it's not ideal because you can have movement when you weld things up, but um, it's also simpler to do it that way. These were supplied by Nelson. A little bit harder to check your size when they're oval shaped, so you've got to do some, some test squashes. Um, which I did and obviously somehow I got that completely wrong because I ordered the wrong size. Um, so if it's round it's pretty basic. Um, you can go oversize a little bit, so if, you, if your exhaust port's 45mm you can make a 48mm header. Um, that's not a problem. It's usually better to go slightly over on a, on a um, NA engine. Um, but not too small. It does not make your car more talky having smaller headers. That, that's, that is rubbish. Uh, the other things you'll need is obviously a collector, four into one on each side. In this case, if it's a V6, three, whatever. Very vehicle specific. Um, don't buy aluminized pipe. It is shit to weld with a TIG welder. It's rubbish. It's, it's for exhaust shops that blast and, and forget with a MIG. It's, you don't use it just get black pipe. Unfortunately, I've been supplied with aluminized straight tube, which is obviously all they could get. Um, it's very difficult to get anything at the moment. Why is, why is that? Why can't you get parts like that? What does it go? Shipping, COVID things, who knows? Everything's hard to get. So um, the next thing is take your time because it's gonna take time. If you try and do it the easy way, it won't fit or it'll just, take you twice as long so just you just have to be patient and if you're not a patient person don't do it because it won't work let's get stuck into it hey Wayne hey I'm back <laughs> can I make some noise yeah go for it
That was legitimately exhausting. Not even dad punning. And the guy that invented turbos used to make extractors and just wanted to not have to do it anymore. What about bolting on a set of twins on a 32 GTR? <laughs> Still easier. The headers or extractors as we call them in Australia are pretty much done. I'm sort of sort of happy with them but not. It's one of those things you can always you always look at them and think you could have done a better job, but at the time it's it's pretty um, sort of difficult work to getting in and out. It's really really tedious. Everything has to come in and out so many times, and the more pipes you put in, the more difficult it is. So it's um, it's not really a job for the faint-hearted. You've got to have a lot of patience, and even that runs thin thin at times, um, especially when you get to the towards the end of it when you weld it all up for the last time and, and have to finally find out whether it'll actually come out of the car or not. We thought that this one wasn't going to come out but then somehow I magically turned it the right direction and it just fell out on, on the ground so that was that was good. Then you just have to work out which way to, to corkscrew it back in there. This one was, was better. Um, it was easier to make because there's no steering shaft in the middle of it so the piping is, is a lot more, is a lot simpler because we didn't have to go around it uh, but this side of this the engine is over this side for steering clearance so it's a little bit tighter on this side at the same time but uh, it came out okay it's um it comes out quite easily once you get the bolts undone the the bolts are dogs to get at so you get that this is why we have turbos kids so you dogs. don't have to do this <laughs> um you'll you'll probably note that these aren't equal length extractors or headers most headers aren't it's not really a thing it's like that's like high end trying to get that last horsepower at 8000 rpm that's when you go to the effort of trying to make the the links equal um and even then you still to put a lot more science into it and probably make 15 sets before you get the, get it right it's really not required this will give 99% of the benefit that you get from a set of headers regardless of the length of the of the um, the pipes or whether they're the same or not it doesn't matter so don't overthink it you also note that we don't have spikes in the end of our header um, they apparently do something but they also cost 60 bucks for a tiny little spike and I'm not going to go there for the for whatever perceived gain there is uh, if you have a slipping collector, they normally just have the, the spike as, as part of the collector. But I couldn't get any slip-ins. That would have been ideal, but, you know, it's just hard to get stuff at the moment. So from here, um, we're going to go to 3-inch out of these collectors, and they will then merge into a single 3-inch exhaust into a cat through to the back and into just a single muffler. So it's a pretty, pretty simple system. We're going to make that out of stainless um, these are made out of mild steel because it's it's a better material to make them out of for a start because it's um, it's not as prone to cracking as stainless is. But we're also going to get them ceramic coated just to contain the heat in there, uh, stop it from burning the engine bay. They want to burn off all the scratches that we put in it, <laughs> making the headers. So once that done, we will that done. That's done. We will. Um, Probably move on to wiring. I've got. I've already got a little plan for that. Um, I'm going to say it now. We've got to start it next week. How about that? You, you all better get some work done then. <laughs> uh, we've still got a bit of bit of oil system stuff to do. Uh, I've got the pickup set up now. Um, I am going to extend a tube inside to the centre of the sump and see if that is practical slash doable 
makes things better. Don't really know yet, but all that stuff's easy to get at and change, so I'll just do it to appease myself in the the um, the comment section who are worried about oil surge. And then we've just got an oil cooler to fit. Matt's got the radiator fitting up the big uh, fans that we got for it. Fit the oil cooler. That stuff, that stuff. Wire it. Stuff and things. Fire it up. Lots of things. And Mark is going to fix the rear guards. Sweet. Hopefully soon, and then we can put the rear, the back end back together and get the brakes working. Sweet. So we're getting there. But it feels like it's time to start it because that makes everyone feel better. Don't forget about our Tool Pro X giveaway up until the 10th of December. If you spend 30 bucks at the store, you go into the draw, and I think we're going to give away two now. Yeah. We've got, we got a couple at hand, so you get twice as many chances to win now. Hell yeah. Uh, it, only if you're in Australia, of course. That's it. Sorry, guys. Bop, <laughs> now I've forgotten what I was going to say again. That's all we've got time for. See you next week. <laughs> That's all we got time for. See you next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>